Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 1 from IMO 2021. Let n greater than or equal to 100 be an integer. Then we write down the numbers from n to 2n, each on different cards. Then we shuffle these cards and these n plus 1 cards are divided into two piles. We want to prove that one of the piles contains two numbers such that the sum of their numbers is a perfect square. Okay, so what I did was I started with n equals 100. And I tried listing these in two different piles and see when I get a contradiction. So I started listing these. If I have 100 in one side, 125 would be on the other side. So the perfect squares that appear as the sum of these two, uh, two numbers in this range are going to be the smallest one would be 100 plus 100, which is 200. So you have to have something more than 200. And the largest one would be 200 plus 200, which is 400. So the numbers that I have are, are going to be from 15 squared to 25 all the way to 19 squared. So then I thought, how can I prove that in fact I do have two numbers that their sum is a perfect square? So if you list some of these, you realize that, okay, so this property is basically gives you a graph. So you connect two numbers if their sum is a perfect square. And the question is essentially asking us to prove that there is no bipartite graph. If you are familiar with the language of graph theory, it makes things easier. Because we know with the language of graph theory, bipartite graph means no odd cycles. So I will explain that. Okay, so for example, if you have three numbers, let's say you have three numbers x, y, and z, x plus y is a perfect square, y plus z is a perfect square, and z plus x is also a perfect square. If you have a situation like this, then that would lead to a proof. The reason is two of these three are going to be in the same pile, and that would give us the sum of two of them is a perfect square. So then I thought, okay, can I find an example for 100? So what I did was I started with listing out x plus y, y plus z, and z plus x, and because I wanted to make sure that they are all within the range of 100 to 200, I chose these to be uh, close perfect squares. So if you choose 225, which is 15 squared, 16 squared, which is uh, 256, and then 17 squared, 289. And I solved this one and I ended up getting that in fact, that doesn't work because one of the numbers became less than 100. Then I tried the next one. If you try the next one, x plus y equals uh, 256, y plus z equals 289, and uh, z plus x equals 324, you would actually get that x, y, z are not integers because when you add these up, on this side you get 2 times x plus y plus z, and on this side you get some odd number. So that doesn't work. So then I realized that if I were to take these three perfect squares, two of them must be odd and the other one must be even or all three of them be even. So eventually when I did that, I was able to find x equals 163, y equals 126 and z equals 198. So these three numbers, the sum of each two of them becomes a perfect square. So then I thought, okay, perhaps I can extend the same idea. So now I'm going to write down what I came up with. In general, I'm going to take x plus y equals a squared, y plus z equals a plus 1 squared, and z plus x equals a plus 2 squared. Now, if you add these up, you'll get 2 times x plus y plus z equals a squared plus a plus 1 squared plus a plus 2 squared. This is even, so that tells us that a is odd, because you need two of them to be odd and one of them to be even. If a is even, that would not be even. So that means a is odd. So for simplicity, let me rewrite the equation and write it down as x plus y equals 2k minus 1 squared, y plus z equals 2k squared, and z plus x equals 2k plus 1 squared. If you add this up, you would get 2 times x plus y plus z equals so the sum of these would be 4k squared minus 4k plus 1 plus 4k squared plus 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Dividing by 2, we get x plus y plus z equals 
6k squared, the 4k's cancel and we get plus 1. So let's solve for x, y, z and see what we get. So we get x, y, z or x would be 6k squared plus 1, which is the sum of x, y, z, minus y plus z, minus 4k squared. So that would give you 2k squared plus 1. y would give you 6k squared plus 1 minus x plus z. x plus z is 2k plus 1 squared. So this would be 2k squared minus 4k. Okay, and the last one is 6k squared plus 1 minus 2k minus 1 squared. That was the sum of x and y. This would give you 2k squared again plus 4k and the ones cancel. So these are the three numbers. Now, if these three numbers are between n and 2n, then we would be done. The smaller one is 2k squared minus 4k. So I need this to be greater than or equal to n. And I also need the largest one, which is 2k squared plus 4k, to be less than or equal to 2n. If I show that for every n there is a k that satisfies this, then I'm done. So let's figure out what's the range for n. n would be between 2k squared minus 4k and on the other side it would be k squared plus 2k. If I show that every n satisfies some inequality like this for some k then I'm done. So we have these intervals k squared plus 2k to 2k squared minus 4k. If the next one has an overlap with this one the next one would be k plus 1 squared plus 2 times k plus 1 2k plus 1 squared minus 4 times k plus 1. So let's see if there is a common number in here. So what I need is I need 2k squared minus 4k to be at least k plus 1 squared plus 2 times k plus 1. So if I have this inequality then I can show that every integer would be in one of these intervals. Okay let's simplify this and see what we get. This is 2k squared minus 4k greater than or equal to k squared plus, we get 2k here, 2k here, we get 4k plus 3, and this is equivalent to k squared minus 8k being uh, greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so now if you rewrite that as k times k minus 8 greater than or equal to 3, this holds if k is greater than or equal to 9. So if k is greater than or equal to 9, then this would, they would all have common terms. So now let's see what happens when k is greater than or equal to 9 k squared plus 2k is going to be greater than or equal to 81 plus 18 which is 99. So if n is greater than or equal to 99 then there is some k such that n is between k squared plus 2k and 2k squared minus 4k. I believe that's what we had. And that would tell me that there are three numbers x, y, z that the sum of each pair of them is a perfect squared. And that brings me to the end of the solution. If you like this video, check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I have a lot of videos like this working on past IMO problems or Putnam problems or other competitions and also discussing the topics that appear in these competitions. And if you have any suggestions or problems, feel free to email me at mathcompetitioncoach at gmail.com. I will see you in another video.